Why are kitchens covered in foil? <laughs> ah. Hi, my name is Sarah. Hi, my name is Tiki Segura. Hi, my name is Yoni Segura. I'm 24, I'm from Los Angeles, California, and I'm a Persian Orthodox Jew. I'm from Los Angeles, I'm an Orthodox Jew, and I'm married with two kids. I've been asked by BuzzFeed to come in and discuss what Orthodox Jews believe. What do Orthodox Jews believe? You know, Orthodox Judaism is more of an umbrella term for people who believe in the written and oral Torah. God gave us the Torah on Mount Sinai through Moses. The Torah tells us how to live our lives. There's the written law, and then there goes along with that the oral law. People often think this is somehow less important. No commandment given in the Torah can be followed correctly based on the written law. If you went to a doctor and he said, yeah, I know how to do this brain surgery, I've got this book here, you wouldn't go anywhere near that guy. He went to med school, he learned from someone who showed him how to do it. He's practiced X amount of times. He got the oral as well as the written knowledge as to how to do anything. So then people wonder, well, how do you know that it's not just someone's interpretation. There are actually set methodical legal principles, 13 actually, which you can use to figure out exactly what's going on. Why do Orthodox Jews wrap their arms? So it says in the Torah that there should be these things that are in between your eyes and on your arm. It's customary for Orthodox Jewish men to wrap their arms with what is called tefillin. There's actually a verse which is repeated four times in the Torah which says that you have to. Uh, you have to put these boxes with straps on your arm and on your head. There's these little boxes and inside of it, it has the text of Shema and it has the text of the actual commandment. It's a physical reminder to have God on their mind and close to their heart. Binding your actions and your mind to the service of God is often something that I've heard. But at the end of the day, the reason we do any of the commandments is because it's a commandment from the Torah, whether it's why we kosher, whether it's why one gives charity even. It's incredibly important to help people and to care, but the reason that you have to is because the Torah says so. There's a statutory obligation to do so. Why do Orthodox Jewish women cover their heads? One of the things that we believe is that when a woman gets married, her hair is one of like, almost like a nakedness. Married women will customarily cover their heads with either a headscarf or a wig. It's more to symbolize that element of privacy and modesty. I sometimes, you know, will wear different head hair coverings. Right now I'm wearing a wig, which is a way of dressing modestly. Why do Orthodox Jews rock when they pray? That's an interesting question. I think the true answer <laughs> is because that's what they see growing up. When you're praying, you're supposed to be, you know, very present and focused in the moment. It can help you, kind of like with muscle memory, get into a certain headspace. You can stand still. It's whatever helps you focus. It's a way of getting kind of in that mindset of, I'm talking to God. You know, the way I think about it anyway, when I'm standing in front of the Creator or however you want to think of God, there's a certain trepidation or shaking that goes with that. You get, they get into it. It's like physical too. <laughs> Do Orthodox Jewish couples kiss? I guess the short answer is yes, you know, they kiss. Orthodox Jewish couples, once they are married, have a normal romantic life, I guess I would say. First time I kissed my wife was after we got married. The basic idea is that what's called is Shomer Nagia, which literally means guarding, touching. Before marriage, we don't touch each other in any shape or form. You just like raise your eyebrows like, oh, that's weird, right? You know, everyone's at their level of observance, but yeah, I usually generally save that as something to be done under the context of marriage. What is kosher? Kosher is a set of laws which dictate what you can and cannot eat. We don't mix meat and milk together in any shape or form, whether it's cold or hot. Fruits and vegetables need to be washed, checked for bugs, because we don't eat bugs. We, we don't eat pig. Animals have to chew their cud and have completely split hooves. With fish, they have to have scales and fins. We don't eat shellfish. Food has to be prepared by a Jew, and a Jew can just be involved in the cooking of it, so you'll find that at most kosher restaurants, there's gonna be someone on site who lights the fires or is involved in some part of the cooking process. The food that we eat generally in the stores, you'll find little symbols on the foods. 
food picked up from a kosher restaurant will have a double seal on it. So there's gonna be in a bag which is tied and then there's gonna be a sticker around it. Kosher food isn't blessed by a rabbi. It's an often a misconception that people have. Why are kitchens covered in foil? All right, so kitchens are not commonly covered in foil. There are certain types of materials which can be made kosher and certain materials that cannot be made kosher. If a kitchen is not kosher, they'll sometimes cover the countertop as opposed to going through the process of making everything kosher again. What is Shabbat? Shabbat starts on sundown on Friday night, lasts about 24 hours until after the stars come out on Saturday night. You're not allowed to do anything which is constructive work, something which once you do it, it can't be undone easily. So you can't cook, you can't drive, things like that. There's no distractions on Shabbat. There's no working, there's no playing with your phone, there's no calling anyone, especially nowadays when everyone's so connected. The time to really just disconnect and focus on your relationship between each other and between God. When I've had a medical emergency happen to me, it's a surreal experience to quote unquote break the Sabbath to save a life. But that is what you're supposed to do. Human life trumps all of those things. Do Orthodox Jews ever marry cousins? It does happen occasionally. It's technically not one of the forbidden relationships. Uh, it's a bad idea, uh, genetically. Going back to pre-war Europe, Jews lived in small little villages, and there weren't always that many people to choose to marry. Sometimes your only option of someone to marry outside of your siblings would be a cousin, but it's not common anymore. I don't think people look at it as a great idea. Do Orthodox Jewish couples sleep in separate beds? Yes and no. Um, there's different times in the month when a woman has her period and it's called a time of knee death. The couple will separate for that period of time, but then, you know, the rest of the time they can do whatever they want. So that would be like five days of her period, and then we count another additional seven days that are considered like clean days almost. After that period of time, a woman can go to the mikvah, which is a ritual bath, and at that point, she and her husband can then share a bed together. It's a new, like, fresh restart to a marriage every single month. Are Orthodox Jewish marriages arranged? Uh, when you say arranged, that can mean many different things to many different people. You can meet a potential spouse through a blind date, a matchmaker, dating app, however you'd like. In some circles, parents will often arrange a meeting, however they both have to consent. My wife and I were set up to go out, but we went out and we saw if we liked each other, we did, and we decided to get married. Who's best to set you up? People who know both parties and would know Hey, maybe these two will get along. Arranged marriages? No. I think when people think of Orthodox Judaism who haven't been exposed to it, they're gonna go to like what's in the media. Usually what's portrayed in the media is going to be tilted to an extreme one way or the other. I don't think that's always accurate. We're a diverse group, we come from different backgrounds. You know, we often get lumped together with people who have negative experiences with Orthodox Judaism. I've always loved living my life the way I do, living as an Orthodox Jew. You know, we're, we're normal people. <laughs>